Until the turn of the century, Arizona was a hard-won territory. The obstinate and clever Apache Indians fought continuously against the U.S. cavalry. Making his rounds, helping friend and enemy alike, this man helped bring peace to the turbulent border states. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. The last Indians to surrender to the United States government were the Apaches. Because of the trouble they had caused, they were banished to Florida. However, it wasn't very long before they were returned to Arizona. When Geronimo surrendered on March 21st, 1886, he was sent into exile. One of his sub-chiefs, Hulapa, went along. This is a sad homecoming for him and his small family, because they, like many other Apaches in the swamplands of the South, had contacted the white man's disease, tuberculosis. I still can't understand why they're shipping them back here. It's because it's the best place for them, Colonel. Those Indians need good food, fresh air, and sunshine. In fact, this Arizona climate's the best cure we know for tuberculosis. I just don't like it. I've fought those Apaches for 20 years, and I don't trust them. Sick all well. Where are we going to put them? I've been scouting around since the Surgeon General sent me here, and I've located an unused barracks over south of the munitions shed. I think it'll do for an isolation ward. Mm, very well. Miss Marion Dell? Yes. Dr. Baxter. How do you do, Doctor? This is Colonel Cameron. Colonel? May I help you? Thank you. Tough trip. You know how sick Indians are. You never know when they're in pain. They're never that quiet when they're well. Dr. Baxter's in charge now. He's not too happy about the sick Indians returning, is he? No, he isn't. You bring the medical records? Yes, doctor, and my luggage. I'll take over here. Why don't you report to headquarters and after you freshened up, come over to my office? Yes, sir. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Better get some stretchers. There's probably some people in those other wagons that can't walk. Yes, sir. Come on, feller. That's the boy. Everything's all right now. Here. Come in. Well, you don't look like someone that had traveled 2,000 miles over a rough road. Well, I still feel like it. I see you've been looking at the records. Yes, I have, and I'm not too happy with what I see. Some of the patients are pretty far gone. Too bad they were ever sent back east. You'd have a tough time convincing Colonel Cameron of that. Sit down. Thank you. I've requisitioned wool blankets and food from the officer's mess. Wait till the Colonel hears about that. Yes, I know. They'll need the best of care. Well, even the Bible tells us what they need is, is good food and rest and fresh air. Unfortunately, we've learned very little about tuberculosis since that time. Well, I want to get acquainted with my patients. That isn't going to be easy, Doctor. Tell me anything about medicine that is. <laughs> Dilapa, this isn't good for either you or your family. Dr. Baxter's trying to help. He is like other white men. Murderers of my people. Seize him! 
Thank heavens you're all right, Doctor. He's too weak to cause much trouble. Take him to the guardhouse. No, don't do that. He'll die in a cell. Does it matter? He's just excited. Let's, let's give him another chance. Will you take the responsibility? Yes, sir. All right. But if we have any more trouble here, I'll throw the whole tribe in prison. You two men stay on guard. Doctor, quick. Get me a fresh hypodermic needle. is not free. What did I tell you? You can't trust any Apache, sick or well. Now that Halap is on the loose, you know what that means? These hills are still full of renegade Apaches. They'll hide him, help him, maybe even start another Indian war. And it's all your fault. Colonel, I... Now you listen to me, Dr. Baxter. I'm taking away all privileges from the rest of those sick Apaches. Woolen blankets, food from the officers' mess, sunning themselves on that balcony. From now on, they'll be locked in the barracks with double guards on the doors. And they'll eat Indian rations. Colonel, that'll be deliberate murder. And I don't think the Surgeon General would approve. I don't care what the Surgeon General thinks. This is my post. I give the orders here. And as for you, Sergeant, two weeks on bread and water for letting that rotten redskin steal your sidearms. Or would you rather have a general court-martial? No, sir. <laughs> That's all. list. That morning I joined a patrol looking for the renegade Apache.
Federal patrol was far outnumbered. It was a running fight back to the fort. We lost too many men, but the Apaches also suffered. Later, both wounded cavalrymen and Indians were picked up in wagons sent out under heavy guard by the new Commandant Major Eli Carter. That day and far into the night, Marion and I worked over the wounded. It was nerve-wracking work, especially with the wounded Indians who fought against medical attention. yourself. Something's bothering you. Sometimes a doctor wonders just how much good he's doing. You're doing a lot of good. There'd have been many deaths if it weren't for you. Maybe. The Indian situation's worse than ever. Well, the wounded Apaches have been stubborn. But the sick Indians in the isolation barracks think the world of you. No. It's you they idolize. You haven't spared yourself for a moment. You've been up day and night tending them, giving me a chance to rest. Sit down. Just how much sleep have you had? <laughs> Enough. <coughs> Mary and I have been watching you. Your high color and that cough. You ever had any trouble with your lungs? Well, of course not. I just have a cold. That's more than a cold. You've exposed yourself to that disease time and time again. And I don't have to tell you that tuberculosis is highly contagious. Must I remind you, doctor, I'm a nurse? One of the first things I learned was how to take care of myself. You're a very efficient nurse, and I'm sure you've taken every precaution. However, doctors and nurses have been known to be infected by their patients. Well, that hasn't happened in this case. May I go? Wait a minute. Sit down. Here, finish your coffee. I didn't mean to rile you, but I just thought it'd be a good idea to run some tests on you. That's completely unnecessary. I'm tired. I'd like to go to my room. Wait. You sure you won't change your mind about the test? Then do me one favor, will you? Please stop driving yourself so hard. If you need some help, call an orderly to relieve you so you can get some rest. Or call me. Oh, doctor, you need your rest more than I do. You're doing too good a job to let anything happen to you. Good night. in the back, sir. He never had a chance. Where did you find him? Near an Apache village. Mr. Hawks was on his usual tour of the reservation. Score two for Hulapa. Are you sure? Figures. Hulapa swore to kill everybody that had anything to do with deporting him and his tribe. Hawks was the Indian agent. He was partially responsible for sending them back east. It was Hulapa, all right. I bet we hear plenty about this. Sergeant, this is a civil case. Take the body back to town. Yes, sir. The sergeant was right. The whole territory had been aroused by Hulapa's raids. Hugh Patterson, ex-Army scout and Indian fighter, now the territorial delegate to Congress, had been ordered to the fort to conduct an inquiry. Patterson called a conference with the new commandant of the fort and myself. Gentlemen, I moved heaven and earth to have those Apaches deported from this territory. They've always been troublemakers. And now they're coming back, causing more trouble. This has got to be stopped. We've been doing our best, Mr. Patterson. It's not good enough. Have you any idea how I can get to see Lapa? 
Maybe. Through the reservation Indians. I'd like to talk to him face to face like I did Cochise and Geronimo. They listened. Circumstances were different then. Cochise was an honorable man. Geronimo was old and tired. Rulop is bitter. And with a death sentence hanging over his head, he has nothing to lose. Well, I still would like to talk to him. Major, will you have your Indian scouts pass the word? It might drift back to Jalapa's hideout. Yes, sir. The word went out from scout to Apache reservation Indians, from reservation Indian to Jalapa's men. And Jalapa himself heard that Patterson wanted to see him. Jalapa said he would see Patterson only if he came unarmed and accompanied by the Apache scout and me, also unarmed. sir. They couldn't pick up his trail. I have a patrol standing by. Sergeant? Yes, sir. I'm going to take command. We'll use every available man on this patrol. We know that Patterson and the Army Scout are dead. There's a chance that the doctor might still be alive. Come in. May I speak to you, Major? Certainly. Before you send out that patrol, will you listen to Chiricahua? Why? What does he have to say that all Apache not same? Like white man, some good, some bad. Chiricahua, good Apache. He's very grateful to Dr. Baxter for all he's done to help the sick Indians. Major, if you send out the soldiers, it only means another battle and more bloodshed. Besides, they may not even be able to find Olapa's hideout. Chiricahua can find it. You mean that you trust this man? It may be some sort of Apache trick. He's a man of his word, like Cochise was. He thinks that he can make contact with Olapa, perhaps save Dr. Baxter's life, that Olapa's holding the doctor as hostage. Would you put your trust in him? Absolutely. I've been with him ever since we left Florida. He wouldn't lie to me. I know that. Please, Major, for Dr. Baxter. All right. We'll give him 24 hours. Thank you, Major. He will die soon. I want him to suffer as Apaches have suffered. But it is dangerous to keep him so near the fort. Take him into the hills. My braves gather at sundown. They will see him die before we attack the fort.
up my word to the white nurse. You're free. Go to the floor. before his braves gathered, maybe I could go ahead with the job that Cherokee had started and save the fort from attack. of his final effort to escape had hurried his death. Wait a minute, Marion. You're not leaving on that way. Well, I certainly am. There are more sick Indians to be brought back here. I know that, but you need treatment yourself, and you're going to a hospital. Well, doctor... <coughs> Major, this girl needs to stay here take treatment herself. That's an order, nurse. Yes, sir. You do visit your patients twice a week, don't you, Doctor? Why, why? That's an order. <laughs> take good care of her, won't you, Major? See you soon, Doctor. Thank you. I was still worried about Mary, but a great victory had been won. The government ordered the return of all Apaches to their homeland. Ulapa's band surrendered, and at long last, in 1898, Arizona became a peaceful territory. And because of this, 14 years later, Arizona became the 48th state in the Union. <laughs>